Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service uh, with the National College of Ireland and in this short video, another video in our series dealing with non-parametric statistics uh, we're going to concentrate on the Kruskal Wallace H test uh, which is an independent samples test uh, where we've got uh, more than two samples and that we want to compare to see whether there's evidence uh, of differences uh, across the samples or between the samples uh, uh, this is, I suppose, equivalent to the, the parametric uh, analysis of variance that allows us to check to see whether whether there are differences in samples from a parametric perspective, differences in means. Uh, but this, this is run when we violate the assumptions associated with an ANOVA analysis of variance. So in this case, let me just let me just try to motivate this by look by considering three groups. Uh, let's say we have uh, let's say we have uh, three three let's say three different age groups okay so we have let's say uh, 20 to 30 year olds we have 40 to 40 year olds and we have 40 to 50 year olds okay uh, and what we did with these three age groups was we took a sample from those age groups those age categories and we asked the people in them categories how much did they spend on lunch and we noticed for the 20 to 30s they spent 20 25 27 and let's say 18 euros on lunch there was four people in the 20 to 30 uh, age group 30 to 40 year olds uh, spent 15, 12, 10, uh, let's say uh, 13 euros on lunch. And the 40 to 50 year olds spent, let's say, they spent, let's say, 26, uh, 29, let's say 30 and 32. And let's say some one of the 40 to 50 year olds spent 40 euros on lunch. Maybe they're buying their, their kids lunch as well, but they spent 40 euros on lunch, okay? And the question that we have is whether there's it differs in the spending behavior of 20 to 30 year olds compared to 30 to 40 year olds and 40 to 50 year olds or is there some pairwise difference across these particular groups uh, now in this particular instance you can see that these groups have different sizes the sample size here is of size 4 4 and here we have 5 okay uh, so we have to keep that and take that into consideration yeah uh, but one restriction that I have implemented here, I've just pulled these numbers out of the sky. Uh, one restriction that I have mentioned here, uh, or I have implemented here, is that there's no ties, there's no repeating values. Okay, so this is the no ties, no ties situation. So there's no correction, there's no correction for ties. The video that I'll do after this, I'll throw in an example of where we actually have tied values. Uh, and how we correct for them. But I mean, the test statistic, just to keep in mind, it looks very, very complicated looking, but it's actually straightforward. It's H. H is equal to 12 divided by N times N plus 1, where N is the total number of observations across all of your groups, okay? which needs to be multiplied by the sum of. Uh, for each group, we need to rank the group, uh, or sum up its ranks, and then we square that divided by the group the group size and then from that we're going to deduct three times the total the total the total size of all observations or across all samples uh, plus one okay and this is the this i suppose this is what we're going to be testing for a hypothesis the hypothesis okay and um, the null position h0 is that there's no difference no difference in the ranks of the groups Okay, or what we've associated with ranks and HA is that there is a difference okay there's a difference somewhere uh, the significance level for this test let's say our significance uh, will set the significance at alpha is equal to 0 0.05 okay and then we have to calculate our test statistic the test statistic okay uh, which we're going to do now in a moment then we have to calculate the critical values and then we need to make our decision by comparing our test statistics to our critical values so this is the five-step process in relation to a hypothesis test okay so what we need to do is well we need to figure out what what n is n is the total number of observations so we have four here we have four here and we have five here okay uh, which gives us a total of four eight and then we have five here gives us a total of 14 so we have a uh, total total uh, across all samples is equal to 13 observations so now we have h is 12 divided by 13 times 13 plus 1 minus 3 times 13 plus 1 and then we have to take into consideration this factor here so we have to figure out the ranks and the individual sample sizes so what we're going to do is let's just take all the observations let's call this group a group b and group c and let's rank the observations from smallest to largest, keeping track of the groups that we're in. So the smallest value that we have in this particular data set seems to be a 10, and 10 is associated with group B, 
Okay. The next smallest value seems to be a 12. 12 is also associated with group B. The next smallest value is a 13, which is associated with group B. The next smallest value is a 15, which is associated with group B. Uh, the next smallest value uh, 